under the termination test four, you are provided with uh, two salts, I and a K, and uh, an organic compound L. Carry out the following test on I, K, and L, recording your observations, recording your observations and uh, inferences in the table. Then answer the questions which follow the table. A. The first part of it, dissolve the whole of uh, your sample of I in uh, 10 cm cube of uh, distilled water and uh, use a portion of the solution for the following tests. 1. To 2 cm cube of the solution, to 2 cm cube of the solution of uh, I, add aqueous uh, sodium hydroxide and warm. Yes, I, I did that. I did that. Uh, and uh, uh, what I observed was uh, a rust a brown a precipitate, rust brown precipitate effervescence um, on litmus paper, 10 red litmus paper, uh, 10, red, uh, 10 red litmus paper blue. And uh, ammonia gas was also evolved. And uh, under my inference section, after uh, comparing uh, my observation with what is in the booklet, I saw that ion 3 pre uh, was present, um, ammonium ion was also present. A uh, 2 to 2 cm cube of aqueous sodium ethanoate. Add a few drops of a few dro add a few drops of the solution of I and a boil. On boiling, I observed that the solution was it was a red blood precipitate. On boiling the solution, I observed that um, red blood precipitate were formed. And uh, in line with the with the information in the booklet, ion three I, ion three ion present in it. So that is how you will be doing your uh, your identification test or what we call determination test. When you do all this, you will identify the ions, the the cations or the the anions that are there. And try to identify the functional groups that are there, and then you draw your conclusions before you finally get to where you will be asked to identify the different components of the salt or the elements or the functional groups that are there. Let's move ahead. It takes us to uh, the third the third section. The third section says uh, to 2 cm cube of the solution of I, add a few drops of aqueous uh, potassium thiocyanate. Keep the mixture or solution resulting from this test for test A, uh, A5 below. I did that and I saw it was a very deep blood red coloration. I observed a very deep, uh, a very deep blood, um, uh, blood red coloration. And uh, on my inference section, uh, of the confirmatory uh, um, booklet, I also saw that it was it's ion three that is present. Ion three is present. So number four to two cm cube of the solution of I add a solution of K to it. Allow the mixture to stand, then shake it and add dilute hydrochloric acid. My observation in doing this, there were white precipitate of um, mercury chloride, white precipitate of mercury chloride, and my inference on my inference column, my conclusion was that it was uh, mercury ion that is uh, cation that is present. And uh, number five, heat the mixture or solution resulting from test A three, and then add aqueous um, sodium um, sulfide in a drop-wise manner. I did that. I did that and uh, my... I did that and my observation was the color disappears. 
the, this, the color disappeared. And the ions that I found there were sulfide ion, sulfide ion. There were sulfide ions that were found in uh, the solution. Uh, the B part of it dissolve about half of your sample of K in 5 cm cube of distilled water and uh, use a portion of the solution for the following tests. Uh, 1. To 2 cm cube of the solution of K, add 1 cm cube of aqueous sodium hydroxide, um, um, aqueous sodium hydroxide, and then add to excess. On doing that, I, I realized that the solution turned murky, a uh, white precipitate, um, uh, white precipitate were formed in excess, and I concluded that it must be a group two element. It must be a group two element, and a group two hydroxide. So, to um, uh, this uh, two, to two cm cube of solution of K, to two cm cube of solution of K, add two cm cube of aqueous uh, potassium dichromate. So my observation in doing this, I saw that it was a pale, a pale yellow, a pale yellow uh, precipitate of barium uh, chromate, a pale yellow precipitate of barium chromate that were formed, and uh, in trying in trying to see the cations that are in that tally with my observations, the cation that tally with my observations, I realized that it was barium ion that is present. So it uh, now takes us to uh, the third section, of, uh, third section of it, or C part of it. Carry out a flame test. Carry out a flame test on a small portion of K. A flame test on small portion of K. As I earlier told you, how you can carry out a flame test in the laboratory. You need hydrochloric acid. You need um, a nichrome wire. And then, if you are given a, P, a sample to carry a flame test, you must dip the, uh, you must dip, uh, the nichrome wire into the concentrated sulfuric acid, into the concentrated sulfuric acid, then use it to pick up, be it a salt or whatever sample you have been given in the laboratory to test. Then take it closer to the, uh, to the blue flame. Take it closer to the blue flame, and when it burns, from there, you will be able to you will be able to identify you will be able to identify the color of uh, the flame, the color of the flame. Now, D, to the remainder of K, to the remainder of K, add concentrated um, uh, sulfuric acids. Add concentrated uh, sulfuric acids. My observation in doing this, I saw that effervescence was produced. There was a pungent and a colorless um, uh, hydrochloric, um, uh, a pungent and a colorless hydrogen chloride gas that was produced. Hydrogen chloride gas that was produced. Then, in the, this thing, I realized that there was a chloride ion that are present. Chloride ion are present, and uh, when that when it reacts, you will see the hydrogen chloride gas that is being released. Now. Uh, the E part of it, place about a one quarter of your sample of L. Place about one quarter of your sample of L in an inverted crucible lid. And uh, heat it strongly from, uh, from below. On doing that, my observation was that it burns with a very low uh, luminosity, flame of low luminosity. And that shows that the hydrocarbons there are of a lower ratio, a lower um, hydrocarbons. Uh, that is about uh, four, uh, five, or six uh, um, aliphatic uh, compounds. So now, uh, it takes us to the F section of our experiment. Dissolve the remainder of the remainder of your sample of L in uh, your your sample of L in five cm cube of distilled water. And use the solution for the following tests: observation and inferences. Under my observation, I realized that in doing that, with um, um, uh, with neutral, it turns brown, and uh, that shows that it has a pH of uh, around about six, 
a pH of about 6. So it's a very, really, very, very, very weak uh, acid in that case. A very, very weak acid in that case. Now, uh, not really, but you can get it like that. But that was the what I got from the um, uh, confirmatory booklet. And uh, two, to two cm cube of the solution of L, add about 0 0.5 cm cube of aqueous sodium hydroxide. And then add one cm cube of copper to sulfate solution and heat the resulting mixture. Uh, on doing like that, uh, I only observed that the solution turns blue. The solution, on adding it, the solution turns blue and it now changes to orange on heating. So as I earlier told you, whatever thing you observe in, at any stage of, your, of your, your lab work or your practical work, make sure that is stated in, on your um, answer booklet. The examiner knows what he wants. And by going through your answers, because you might not know exactly what the examiner wants if you can't understand the question very well, or if you can't carry out the, the, the um, uh, your proceed uh, your your experiment well. So now in that case, I said the solution on doing that the solution turned blue, and uh, later on changed to orange on heating. And uh, I realized that it was a reducing sugar that was present. Reducing, reducing sugar was uh, present. So now answer the following questions. Question number one. What metal is present? From all our observations, from all the identification, the metal present is iron. And we have been measuring that is iron three. Then what is its oxidation number? What is its oxidation number in I itself? Imagine. Of course, ion 3, that implies the oxidation number for that ion is plus 3. Um, suggests an identity for L. Of course, L, after everything, is a reducing sugar, and that is C6H12O6. So that is it. Um, um, just for purpose of revision, I said you could um, copy this link, uh, place it on YouTube, and uh, watch it for all the exams, um, past uh, um, exam uh, practical uh, question for revision. So then again, uh, before we get to uh, titration or quantitative analysis or volumetric analysis, I will uh, advise you to go to uh, to watch uh, some of our previous um, to watch our previous uh, videos on acid base or neutralization titration. Then you can also watch uh, the videos on redox titration. The videos on redox titration. Be versed with them because we are still coming back to uh, to do this. So do this. Be versed with uh, the the the, um, the procedure in titration, the necessary precautionary measures that are being taken, how data are being recorded, how you use the data, how you choose which of uh, the, the uh, which of the values in terms of the um, accurate uh, titrations, which of them you can choose for uh, to uh, to uh, to calculate your uh, your mean um, tetra which of them you can use in calculating your mean tetra and how you can use that in calculating the number of moles of in calculating the number of moles of the analyte or the 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 analyte before calculating the number of moles of the tetrant so be first with this then Subsequently, when we come out with other videos on titration based on the Cameroon um, GCE A level chemistry syllabus for practicals, you will know more about it. Then, 
lastly, we have some links here. We have some links here on acid base uh, past exam revision questions. You can copy them to watch them to and you will be versed with some of uh, those um, uh, questions maybe you must have come across them then again we also have a link uh, for uh, uh, qualitative analysis you can copy it put it on copy it put it on um, on youtube and watch them then red dot titration we have the, the the links you copy it part one when you watch part one Advisor, uh, it is advisable for you to watch part two because part two is a step uh, by step um, procedure in calculating uh, for the calculations. Part two is uh, purposely for the calculation. Then part one is how the procedure or the methodology that you use in carrying out the uh, titration. Uh, thank you. I'm wishing you. Uh, uh, Wishing you best of luck in your exams. Uh, once more, for those of you who have not uh, subscribed, please uh, like the video, uh, subscribe, but do not forget to hit the notification bell. Thank you once more for watching.